Okay then guys, hi, welcome. Uh, my name is Dipper and I'm here at Farmer Plus. Um, something landed on my desk on Friday and um, I thought this is something that really you ought to or we be aware about. Um, primarily this is aimed at the London area but it has got quite a few important bits that are um, necessary for the advanced service that is um, about to go national as well so even though you may be in London or not it doesn't really matter some of the things that we'll talk about are going to be just as equally important to you as well as I said um, this landed on my desk on Friday and um, surprise surprisingly um, or probably not surprisingly if you're uh, um, if you sort of like dealt with the NHS before they've expected the service to start off today um and um, which which i think is um pretty ridiculous but still um that's what we've ended up with so what i've decided to do is go over the service level agreement with you and um it'll save you a bit of time i think doing it this way and what i've done is i've had a quick look through it and i've highlighted some of the most important parts um that i think is in 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 the, in the service level agreement so it just gives you a brief idea of what's going on um at the same time it should hopefully give you or save you a bit of time uh, doing this okay so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just flick through it as I said this came on my desk uh, just the other day literally so the first things first um, um, the service is uh, uh, effective from uh, the 1st of September um, which is today um, to the uh, to, to Friday so to um, March the 31st 2016 okay unless it's terminated earlier as you can see, I've highlighted some of the more important parts to it. So that's the that's one thing. Let's move down a bit. Okay, now the um, the funding for the national uh, flu service and the London service is actually the same. And um, let's look at some of the the employee section now. It says here uh, you need to use appropriately qualified and experienced staff vol or volunteers. Um, that you need to have the agreed employment policies in place and if you haven't got these um, you can contact us and we can point you in the direction for that okay and essentially what it's saying is it needs to have taken the required training and we'll go over the required training a little bit later on um, okay so monitoring they'll monitor it weekly okay and an important thing is to make sure you've got adequate insurance. I mean, most of you, if not all of you, have got some sort of MPA insurance. It probably will cover you, but I would strongly suggest that you give them a ring just to make sure that that's um, the case, okay? Um, you need to have a, a procedure for dealing with complaints. Again, there is a SOP on our website for that if you need that, okay? And um, you also need to have your health and safety issues in place as well. So, and here, if you could look around here, gives you an idea of some of the things that you're going to need. And again, you know, we can point in the right direction if you need help with that. Okay, as um, per last year, uh, you will need to record the information on the Sonar platform. Okay, and um, alternatively, if you're going to be using any emails to um, talk to the GP or to um, uh, send patient identifiable data along you will need to use emails with the NHS.net address and that's basically what this section here is telling you about. Okay you also need an effective business continuity plan again there is one on our website I think there's one on the PSNC website as well should you need that too. Okay so moving down as you can see, there's a lot of waffle here as well. Here you go. You can terminate the agreement, um, giving one month notice. And here is the specification. Now let's quickly go into to the details of it now. So you'll need to um, uh, you need to be provided by the pharmacist. Now obviously that doesn't mean the pre-registration student. It doesn't mean a uh, medicines counter staff or anything like that. It has to be the pharmacist who's doing the administering. Okay, you need to have a fridge, which I'm sure all of you have. Okay, and it's got some uh, uh, specifications to the fridge a little bit later on. Now, in general, it only can be provided in the pharmacy premises. However, there are exceptions, and you'll see um, a few um, how you can deal with those exceptions. If you want to go to a care home or if you want to go out um, into the community and provide the service, you can do it, but there, there, there are rules behind that as well. Um, you need to have an anaphylaxis algorithm, okay? And if you look on this website, you can download that. 
Okay, and um, you need to be trained up to do it from two years of age. I mean, not you from two years of age, but what I mean is uh, any any child over the years over two years, you'll need to be able to provide this service to as well. Here, it provides a little bit more information: the types of adrenaline injections you'll need. Um, a good one is the Emirad injection, um, and you've got these three strengths. EpiPen Auto Injector is available as a 300 and the 150 as well, but not the 500. You do need the 500, especially for adults. Okay, so it might be an idea if you don't have it to try and get the emeralds in. Alternatively, you can use your ampules and draw out the necessary amount of adrenaline. But either way, you will need to be covered for these three strengths. Okay. Um, some things about the uh, accreditation and staff training: your uh, pharmacist will be able to, will, well, will need to be able to vaccinate at least 20 people. There's a little bit of training on the CPP website, so I would suggest you might want to have a look at point 2.4. There is, if I believe correctly, a declaration that you'll need to have as well, and also you'll need to give NHS England access to the CPP viewer to make sure that they can check to make sure that you've actually have completed that. So uh, um, you've got a little bit more information on, on, on that bit there. Okay. Uh, now this is an interesting one because it used to be every two years. Um, first of all, a pharmacist is responsible for reassessing the competence every three years. Um, um, and uh, if you have been already fully com if you've fully completed the declaration of competence then in 2014-15 there's no need to require to complete this again um, another thing here is there we go um, uh, the part of the um, training requirements is part one of the vaccination process you need to have at least um, basic life support and again this must be updated every three years um, those of you who attended the Pharma Plus event recently or even the previous year therefore should be fine in providing the service and obviously you'll need to sign the um, patient group direction and finally you'll um, need to have a hepatitis B vaccination or you'll need to be Im immunized for that at least okay so um, a lot of this is um, now goes into a bit of waffle. Really, the suitability of the premises. You know, you need to have um, the ability to safely store vaccines, to dispose of shops in clinical waste, and you'll need to have a process in place um, what to do with a needle stick injury. Now, if I remember correctly, there is a process on our website for that as well. And also, you'll need to do it in a consultation room as well. And it's got some. Um, basic stuff there for um, the consultation room as well essentially it needs to be big enough so if somebody were to collapse that they should be able to collapse in a, in a safe way rather than be slumped in a chair okay so there's there's that um, all right now recording you've got a little bit of um, information recording so you'll need to complete the recording you'll need to do it on the sonar platform and also it's a good idea to put a record on the PMR now um, they're insisting upon you putting a PMR record on for the PPV the uh, flu is generally um, uh, uh, sort of like a, a, a good practice but still I would suggest you do everything on the PMR and the records need to be kept for at least eight years okay now um, ideally you would need to do it um, within 24 hours or 48 hours if it's a weekend or a public holiday now this one is a bit of an unusual one and I've highlighted it in green um, and I have a feeling this might cause a little bit of contention for a few people as well so it says here um, uh, GPs um, need to be informed of those who decline immunization now I, you know a lot of the time I, I suppose you know you'll talk to a patient and say have you had your flu vaccination no I don't want it and then they just go off. So I, I'm not sure how that's going to be managed. And I, I'm going to send off a, an email just to check up on that bit there. So it's just something for you to bear in mind that you do actually need to let GPs know, uh, those people who decline the immunization, um, what that does for patient confidentiality, I don't know. But I'm checking up on that one as we speak. All right. OK, so um, declarations of consent need to be kept for at least seven years. Okay, and each patient needs to complete a patient experience survey as well. Okay, so here um, it just gives you a bit of information on on, on how to do um, um, off-site type of um, uh, um, services. I mean, the need to perhaps include a medical counter assistant to come with you. 
uh, in case, for example, there is an emergency. You know, you might need a, you might need a chaperone as well. Um, there's a bit more information about the cold chain, about how to use a validated call box, and also when you're putting um, vaccinations in the call box to make sure that it's bubble wrapped or insulated in another way so it doesn't freeze. Um, and also, any unused vaccinations need to be returned into the fridge within seven hours, so within eight hours. Okay, so um, it is possible to do it off-site, but you do need to have other things um, uh, sorted out. And also, I should really have sort of highlighted this, which is um, to make sure that you uh, you're you're properly um, insured to do this as well. Okay, now um, we'll talk a little bit about payments in a bit, but um, apparently there's a payment of one pound fifty per vaccination that contributes towards the waste management, the anaphylaxis, um, uh, pens, etc., and the training costs as well. So we'll come on to that in a little bit as well. Okay, and again, it tells you a little bit more about the um, uh, the need to actually record it on the Sonar platform. Okay, so uh, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to I'm going to sort of fast forward now. Um, I'm not going to go over this bit in in too much detail. You can read through this, but uh, um, for those of you who are not in the London region, this bit here will be incredibly useful to you. It actually goes over the types of people who are covered under the National Advanced Flu Service. So you've got here, you know, people over eighty, so eighty-five, sixty-five, even. Um, um, and, and also those at risk people or pregnant women, um, people living in long stay residential homes and carers allowance, etc. So that is the that the, and so housebound patients of immunized uh, immunocompromised individuals. So those ones are covered under the national um, pharmacy flu service. Okay. Um, now, if for example you um, in the, you're in the London region, okay, you also have the ability to vaccinate under that PGD for these people here. All right, so I'm not going to go into that in too much detail. There's a nice little table that I'll show you in a minute, but um, it's it's something for you to bear in mind. And, and notably, there is this bit here: two years to 18 years. Okay. Um, there's also uh, I think that's the main ones there. But you, I, I mean, I would suggest you have a read through this as well when, at your own leisure. There is also in the London region the pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine which you um, can also administer and the administration is for um, these people here so it's um, who have not been vaccinated since the age of two who are age 65 and over and in and those patients um, aged 2 to 64 on the 31st of um, sorry on 31st of March 2015 defined as at risk in chapter 25 of the green book um, so basically, this is going to be the this cohort here. The the sixty five and over is going to be the main ones that you'll probably be targeting. And you've got a little bit more information here on the eligible eligible groups as well. So I'll, I'll, I'm not going to go into each one there. Okay, so that's the that's the main um, bit there. So in in general, if you're not in the London region, you could look at the. Uh, let me move up a bit. You can look at the the bits here. Okay, and it says here for those cohorts. Um, covered under National Advanced Flu Service, and if they're not covered under that, you would then look at this bit here, covered by the London one if you're in the London region. If they're covered under this, then you can administer and get paid for it as well under um, the PGDs. Okay, let's move down a bit. So to the um, some of the important things here, um, the NHS will pay you on a monthly basis, and this is the payment that you'll receive. Okay, so um, you'll receive um, £7.64 per administered dose plus an additional £1.50. Um, that will mean a total of £9.14. Now that £1.50 apparently covers the costs of things like training anaphylaxis kits, etc. etc. Um, the pneumococcal vaccine is exactly the same price, okay? £7.64 plus £1.50. Um, now if you're administering... Um, um, another vaccine uh, it looks as if the price of that will be going down to four pounds plus one pound fifty per second dose third dose of vaccines when co-administered with a first okay that's about as much as i really wanted to go over with the with this bit here i would suggest i mean this is going to be emailed out to you a lot as well so have a read through it when you have a moment um, along with that um, there is this letter that we will email out to you as well 
in here, again, it doesn't matter whether or not you're in London or not, there's a brilliant table which I'd like you to um, have a look at. So here it really does sort of like um, go over in um, layman's language, really, um, what's covered under the National Flu Service here um, and also uh, uh, what's covered under, so the National Flu Service and also what's covered under the London Flu Service in, in very sort of like very, very brief uh, bullet points there. Okay, so um, that's all I really wanted to speak to you about today. Um, it's uh, I, I mean, it's, I would strongly suggest that you know you you do provide this service if you're able to nationally or all within London or and within London. Um, good about money as well. Um, if again, if you need any help, um, don't hesitate to give us a shout on that as well. Okay, so hopefully you you have a fairly good idea now of what's um, covered. Have a read through the vaccination schedules and the um, and, and the PGDs and get back to us if you need any more help. Okay then, um, good luck and uh, take care now. Bye-bye.